Retention, this is where it ends. Or maybe this is where it starts. I always tell my patients when we finish a treatment and we start the retention, this, this is, is the, the most, most important, important part, part of, of your, your treatment. treatment. Now the question we hear most of the time from our patient is, for how long will I have to wear this? The question we ask ourselves most of the time is, what is the best retention? What is the best protocol? Now the answers you will find in this video might surprise you. And stay till the end where I will tell you the most important thing you have to remember. My name is Stefan Reinhardt, Director of Education for the Clear Institute. And in this video, we talk about what is the best retention after clear aligners. Let's start this thing. is the phase of treatment where we try to keep the teeth in their final position after an orthodontic treatment. If we don't do it, teeth will have a tendency to move and to return towards their original position. Now this is what we call a relapse. There are different reasons for a relapse to occur. It can be caused by elastic recoil of the periodontal tissues, pressure exerted from the oral and facial soft tissues, occlusal forces, post-treatment facial growth and development, or a combination of some of those things. In order to prevent relapse, we put our patient into some type of retention after orthodontic treatment. But what type of retention is the best one? Fixed retention, removable retention, a combination of both, and you will hear all kind of opinions and, and recipe out there, but they are all based on one thing, clinical opinion. There is a difference between clinical opinion and scientific evidence. Not that clinical opinion is not good, but you have to decide if you base your treatment on scientific evidence or clinical opinions. We all want recipes. We would like someone to tell us, do it like this, add a little bit of this, add a little bit of that, and it will work. But this is not how dentistry works. There is no magic and no recipe for retention. There are a lot of opinions, and what I want to give you today is an idea of what scientific literature is saying and an idea of what I do in my office. When reading all scientific literature, and I mean serious ones, like what is published by the Cochrane Group. Now you have the link in the description below for, for that. While you're there, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click the bell to be notified every time we put a new video online. When you read this, you see that they usually come across the same conclusion. More research is needed in order to come up with the best retention protocol possible. For now, the consensus is that we need permanent retention. Permanent, not in a way that it has to be worn all the time or abundant on the teeth, but meaning that it has to be for as long as the patient lives. What? Here's what I tell them. When they ask, how long will I have to wear this retention? My answer is always the same. Now you might want to write this down and share it with your team. Here's what I tell them. You will have to wear it as long as you want to keep your teeth straight. You will have to wear them as long as you want your teeth to be straight. That usually is, is clear enough that they understand what it means. I found that it was better accepted than saying, you will have to wear it for the rest of your life. That seems drastic and it, it doesn't give the chance to the patient to decide. By telling them that they have to wear it until they want their teeth to be straight, they have the choice and, and it's their choice to stop whenever they want. Now we know we need retention, but what type is better? Fixed lingual wire, vacuum form retainers, holly retainers? If you look at studies, and I recommend searching studies by Dr. Simon Littlewood, an orthodontist from the UK, uh, you will see that it is really not clear. At one point, we have to take a decision and come up with a protocol. We just have to know it can't be based on science. Well, 
it is in a certain way, but just be informed that those who tell you that they have the perfect recipe, that they never saw any relapse in their practice, that they don't even need retention, they probably don't do enough cases. The first thing I do when I decide what type of retention I will use is I will review what type of movements we're, we're, we've done. Uh, did you do some expansion? A lot of posterior movements anterior movements uh, only did you close some spaces did you have a lot of crowding what i've seen in my practice is that when we had cases where there was a lot of spaces initially especially between anterior teeth these spaces had a tendency to reopen really 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 fast not always that you would see it but patient would tell me that in the morning when removing the retainer appliance uh, they felt all the spaces closed but during the day they could feel the teeth relaxed and they had the impression a space was reopening between the teeth you don't want that they don't want that now there are advantages and disadvantages to each type of retention the one I use are either a vacuum form retainer, a bonded lingual wire, or a combination of both. My choice is based, like I told you, on the type of movement we made, but also on patient's compliance. If I know that I had a very compliant patient, that the perfect type of patient, you know them, they're always at their appointments, always on time, always with their aligners, uh, uh, they follow your instructions exactly like they're supposed to, now, with this type of patient, I have no problem using clear aligners, clear retainers, uh, because I, I know they will wear them. On the other hand, if I have doubt that a patient will really wear them, uh, I will do both a lingual wire and vacuum form retainers over it. The advantage of the bonded wire is that you do not need compliance, but it's harder to clean there. Some patient will bypass that region when they floss. Those who floss, that is. <laughs> In 2018, the European Journal of Orthodontic published these two interesting articles uh, where they compared upper and lower bonded retainers versus upper and lower vacuum form retainers in terms of uh, stability, retainer survival, and patient satisfaction. You will also find that link in the description below. Their conclusion was after one year that there is no evidence of a significant difference in stability of retainer survival in the maxilla. In the mandible, bonded retainers are more effective at, at maintaining mandibular labial segment alignment, but have a higher failure rate. In comparison with patients wearing vacuum form retainers, patients wearing bonded retainers reported that they, they caused less, uh, less interference with speech, required less compliance to wear them, and were more comfortable to wear than vacuum form retainers. Patients found that bonded retainers harder to keep clean. Bonded retainers were associated with greater accumulation of, of plaque and calculus than vacuum form retainers and minimally worse uh, gingival inflammation than vacuum form retainers. But this did not appear to produce any clinically significant adverse periodontal health problems. What we have to consider from this study is that patients were treated with braces. Now, in my experience, it is easier for patients who were treated with clear aligners to have a vacuum form retainer after the treatment than it is for patients who had braces. My other opinion is that with a vacuum form retainer, we hold everything in place, not only the front teeth. I feel more confident if I have uh, something maintaining the whole arch. But again, that's me. That's my reality and my clinical opinion. What is your experience? What is your opinion? I would be curious to know. Just write in the comments below what you do, what you decide for your patient. Now, if you decide to use bonded retainer, use a flat wire instead of a round twisted wire. These have more chances to create collateral damages like unexpected 
post-treatment changes. The Clear Institute's protocol for retention after a clear aligner orthodontic treatment, and the one I'm using, is full-time wear of the vacuum form retainer for one month, then 14 to 16 hours a day for another month, and then at night or eight hours until, until, until I stop working. This protocol is based on my clinical experience. It is based on my 22 years of treating patients in orthodontics with braces and clear aligners. It is not based on scientific evidence. The only thing I base on scientific evidence is that I know my patients need retention. I like the conclusion of this randomized controlled trial published in the European Journal of Orthodontics, where they compared uh, three retention methods over five years. Now they wrote, choice of retention method can be individualized, taking into account such, such variables as orthodontic diagnosis, the expected level of patient compliance and the patient's wishes and financial considerations. In 2019, I was in, in Poland to lecture at the Warsaw Orthodontic Convention, and I had the chance to meet with Simon Littlewood, the orthodontist I talked to you about. Now, his life is retention. According to me, he's the reference when it comes to retention. And what he said in his lecture was really interesting. Now, according to him, the most important thing was to repeat, 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 repeat. Always repeat to your patient throughout treatment at every appointment that they will need retention. Have a separate informed consent only for retention signed by the patient. Have pictures in your waiting room talking about retention. He was showing a campaign that was done in the UK where they were saying, Hold that smile. You need to involve your team in this too. They have to repeat, repeat, and repeat also. A lot of times, they are the one who have the best relation to the patients. Sometimes they're even the patient's confident. And this is what our patient have to understand. They worked hard to get where they are. They spend time, money, effort, it's important that they hold that smile. If you are a general dentist or a podiatric dentist, you're going to see your patients for a while. You will see the evolution. This is why I tell them when the treatment is finished, this is where it starts. I'm Stefan Reinhardt, Director of Education for the Clear Institute, where we entertain your education. Have fun making the move. If you want to know more about retention and about the courses we offer at the Clear Institute, join our list. The link is in the description below. Also, if you like this video, remember to subscribe to this channel and give us the thumbs up. If you want to watch more videos, Google things that this might interest you and we think that this will interest you also.